like a grove of hickories. Look at this. This is a kind of almost lyrical open space that echoes its counterparts at Ipswich River Wildlife Sanctuary and Appleton Farms. It's little wonder that the subsequent post-Plymouth waves of settlers overwhelmingly preferred this part of the Commonwealth over the more impoverished soil of the southern side of it all. This is a big old oak. Pretty respectable parking lot. It's so new they haven't even really put up much in the way of kiosks and stuff yet. But who knows how much that matters. Fair number of parking spots. When I visited Joppa Flats a couple weeks ago, everyone there that I spoke with was all excited about this new place. And they were excited about the collaborative nature of protecting it. It involves the Essex County Greenbelt Association. This is old Professor Chandler's long walk. Professor Chandler was the owner of this land and bequeathed it to Massachusetts Audubon to watch over in perpetuity or as close as we can get to that. Right here you have the trailhead for the Kestrel Trail. Professor Chandler's Long Walk. And yet another outstanding Audubon sign design. The former property owner. Professor Alfred Chandler used to have a place up here. And this was his favorite walk. It's an old forest road. <coughs> Yet another, perhaps a cart path for hauling marsh hay back in the day. It's got a blue blaze. And it's about two-thirds of a mile or so. So I'll, and it is the spine of the facility. Other little loop trails spin out from it. It goes through a part of marsh too and I believe as best as I can feebly tell we may be at the point where the tide's receding. So luck it won't be wet. We'll see you when we get there. And we pass through a sliver of isthmus bordered by looks like fresher water marsh on the upper end or somewhat less brackish. And now we are in something of a little upland forest, predominantly oak, ah, we have some kind of warning sign up ahead, so the segmented goes through the marsh may still be washed out. Let's see, yeah, it looks pretty wet to me.
Okay, a beware sign. I don't like the look of that. Probably eventually have to create some kind of working boardwalk. Beware, this section of trail floods at high tide. Be aware of the tide schedule or be prepared to wade through a foot or more of water before continuing. Jeez. Let's see, is there much evidence of it receding? Hard to say. Sure, I want to mess with it. Let's see, it even looks as if the tide's still coming in. Check out the little hunting cabin on an island in the middle of the marsh. <laughs> I don't know what kind of condition it's in, nor how to get there. I've been engaging in this interesting weight exercise. Waiting for the tide to go out. And it's been going out commendably quickly with my usual lack of attention to critical details. I ran afoul of the high tide peak, but already it's receded significantly. And I just gotta wait little while longer for that last bit to go. There's actually a brook in the middle of that. Figuring out how to cross that will be interesting enough as it is. I imagine when the tides out it's no big deal. And then I'll spend an hour or so exploring the legacy world of Alfred D. Interesting to see this single shot time study I'm doing of the tide movement. <laughs> 